Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to give you three tips to play better in chess endgames. And I'm not going to talk about improve your king and keep a healthy pawn structure. I'm assuming you already know that. Of course, those two things are essential in chess endgames. In the endgame, the king is going to help you protect your, your own pawns and also attack enemy pawns. And besides, it can also help you cover in squares and spaces all over the board so of course when you start the end game you need to bring your king out and activate it as much as possible and the other thing the pawn structure of course you need to avoid isolated pawns and uh, doubled pawns and many pawn islands uh, i'm assuming you already know that that has been said so many times and i'm sure you're tired of hearing that the other thing i wanted to say before we start with the three tips is that in chess and especially in chess end games there is no magic this means that if you want to improve in end games you will need to study a little to work a little to think on your own a little it takes time it takes work there's no magic of course these three tips i'm going to tell you are going to help a little mainly in some positions where you can apply some of these things they will be very helpful but don't forget that you will need to study and you will need to put some time in this that being said, let's start with my three tips to play better in chess endgames. So the first tip is save an extra tempo if at all possible. This means that when you're playing an endgame, if you can keep and save a move, something you can play at some point if you need, a waiting move, this can be really important. This can change everything. A tempo can make a huge difference in the endgame. We have an example here, in this position it is white to move. Here black has a pawn up, they have 6 pawns versus 5 white pawns. But there are some good things for white here. Our king is a little bit more active and also they don't have a great pawn structure, they have some problems over there and there is a very nice path for our king going to f5 and it is going to create some trouble for black. In this position we have an extra tempo here with this h pawn and we are not going to use it unless it's the right moment. So we're going to save this move for the exact moment where it is going to be most powerful. So the first move in this position should be king f5. And after king f5, we're attacking the pawn on f6. This means that black needs to play king e7 right now. Here, um, if we didn't have this extra tempo, the endgame could be a draw. And um, I have an example about that. Imagine we have a position like this. It is white to move. We play king f5, black plays king e7. We don't have a way to make progress right now. We need to go back, maybe to e4, and then they can play king e6, or maybe king e6, and they have a draw here. However, it's not the same thing. Here we have this extra move with h5. It's a waiting move, making black play, making it black's turn. And they will be in succession once we make them play. So we can play here h5. It is Black's turn now, they need to get away and then we're capturing pawns here on f6 and also other pawns will be hanging after we capture the one on f6 and the endgame is going to be winning for white. There is another example about this. In this position it is white to move and white is going to be winning. Observe this is an endgame king and four pawns versus king and four pawns. Here we have an extra tempo here with the a pawn and this is going to be a game changer because of that extra tempo we can actually win this end the first move here well we need to play king e4 we are threatening king f5 so black needs to play in this position king e6 if we don't have this extra tempo this is just a normal dowish endgame uh, whenever we move or wherever we go black is just taking up position and they shouldn't have any problem to get a draw here. However, we have this extra move. Here we can play this waiting move a3, and then black is lost. Now we have a position because of that, because of that extra tempo we saved. And um, this is just a win. If they go over here, we make progress over the 5 and we capture pawns and win. And if they go over here, we make progress over d5, and we capture pawns either on the queen side or the king side, and we win. So after king f6, for example, we play king, this, king d5. After king f7, we play king e5. I mean, king c6 is also winning, but they can get some counterplay over here. So king e5 is much uh, safer for white. 
and then we are making progress here and we are actually getting the pawn on g5 and also the pawn on h4 and winning the endgame and all that happened because we saved a tempo for the endgame and that tempo changed everything so you know if you're getting into the endgame and you have an extra tempo don't waste it save it if at all possible because it can give you the victory or maybe help you save the endgame at some point the second tip to play better in chess endgames is appreciate outside past pawns first we need to understand what is an outside past pawn and it's a pawn that is separated from the rest of the pawns for example in this position white can create an outside past pawn over uh, the king side maybe on the g file and um, this is going to be a past pawn away from the rest of the pawns so we have a, a past pawn on g black we have a past pawn on e but our past pawn is going to be farther from the rest of the pawns usually the player with the outside past pawn in the end game we have very good possibilities to win in that end game it's a factor that can help you win in an end game so let's analyze for example how can white make progress and win in this position first of all we need to put the king very active on e4 that's something normal in general that's the first step in all these end games activate the king as much as possible so we play king e3 and king e6 secondly we will create a passed pawn working with our pawn majority on the king side and whenever you want to create the passed pawn you should advance the free pawn that means the pawn without an enemy pawn in front that's the way usually in general almost always to create a passed pawn with a pawn majority and finally well a uh, black king will need to go over there to stop or take care of your past pawn and you will capture his past pawn you will be closer to the rest of the pawns and you will be winning the end game that's the plan so let's see it on the board first activate the king king e3 and king e4 here let's assume black plays something like a6 and then you start make, making progress on your pawn majority like g5 let's assume b6 h5 let's assume c6 and we continue making progress over here and creating our past pawn after the trade here we already have an outside past pawn black king needs to go over g we will be, go up to e and we will be closer so king f6 you can play g7 and we then we can capture and then you can play king d6 of course we are winning this end game because our king is much closer and this is another example by the way this one was played by Bobby Fisher with black pieces. Here uh, we have this endgame king and five pawns versus king and five pawns. Black king is definitely a little more active and that is going to help a lot. But the most important factor in this endgame is going to be the outside past pawn that black can create on the A file. Once they have that pawn, white king will must come over here. Then you will go up to C and we will be closer to the rest of the pawns so one more time the first step is activate the king as much as possible so we'll bring our king to c4 we will play a5 and then we will have the passed pawn on a so let's see what happened in this game fisher played king d5 king d2 and then king c4 our king is really active now it's attacking the pawn on c3 and we are ready to start advancing the eight pawn black played here I mean white played here h5 and then we have this move b6 observe white cannot play b5 here stopping the two pawns on the queen side as our king is so active so we can just play b6 followed by a5 and it's all good here for black after king c2 fisher played g5 then a6 a4 some moves on the king side but in the end the plan is just to advance the pawn on the queen side and create the passed pawn b takes a5 b takes a5 king b2 a4 king uh, a3 king takes pawn king takes a4 king d4 and after king b4 king e3 as you can see black king is closer one more time and all this happened because he had an outside passed pawn at the beginning of the line and this pawn changed everything and that's why black could actually win in an endgame where it seemed to be more or less equal and finally, the third tip to play better in chess endgames is going to be take opposition. 
if possible. Almost always that is going to be the right move. And here I'm talking about regular opposition, like one king in front of the other with one square in the middle. But also I'm talking about diagonal opposition. Sometimes if we cannot take regular opposition, diagonal opposition is going to be very useful. And also sometimes we are talking about distance opposition. If you cannot take regular opposition, distance opposition can save the game or even help you win the game. So we have this example. This one is very basic, but very important and very instructive. This is king and pawn versus king and pawn. It is white to move. And the right move for white in this position is going to be king b5. Observe that if we play king c5 here, black is playing king c7, they are taking a position and we are not making progress. After king b5, king b7, there's no way to actually make progress for white here. So the first move should be king b5. Even when we are getting away from the enemy pawn and from our own pawn, that's the right move because you take opposition. Black king should try king c7. Uh, black should try king c7. We can try king c5 taking opposition again. And this is very strong because now if the king goes back, we are playing king d6. So black king should go over d7. And this is exactly what we needed. Now we can go king b6. We are taking one of the three squares next to the pawn. That's a theoretical endgame. When we do that, we're going to be able to capture the pawn and probably win the endgame especially in this case where our king is going to be on the 6th rank. So let's see, king b6. Because of opposition, we got one of the three squares. King d8, king c6. King e7, opposition again. King e8, we make progress. King f7, opposition. And finally, we are taking the pawn on e6. Black takes opposition now, but it's too late because our king is already on the 6th rank. And this is a rule, a principle for the endgame. If your king goes to the 6th rank before the pawn, you are going to be able to win even if you don't have opposition. So the game can continue like, uh, let's assume king d6, king d8, e6, e7, and then we are winning this endgame. Another example about this idea is this position we have on the board right now. Here it is white to move, white has like uh, an extra pawn, 2 versus 1. The king is also a little more active on d5. But it's not so easy to make progress and win. Black has a solid position over there, it's protecting the pawn. And there are many transpositions to theoretical king and pawn versus king endgames. For example, the move c6 is extremely tempting in this position. It looks like it could be winning because if black takes, white takes, they have a position. And it looks like white is going to be able to win because of that. However, black is not forced to capture that pawn. So c6 is actually a mistake. Black can just play king b8. Now they are taking the pawn and taking opposition later. So maybe we can try c7. Black can play king c8. And this is a fortress. Even when we have a passed pawn on the seventh rank, this is not going to be enough. We're not winning uh, this endgame. Black has a draw here. Because if our king gets closer, it's going to be a stalemate. So the way to win here and the way to make progress is by playing uh, this move, uh, taking diagonal opposition. This time we cannot take regular opposition. Of course, king c6 is not a legal move. Um, the right move in this position is taking diagonal opposition. Observe is not king d6, even when we are closer, it's king e6. So we play king e6 here and then we are going to make a lot of progress starting with this, with this move. Black can play king d8 here, and now we take regular opposition, and it's all good from now on. Black plays king c8, we continue making progress. And at the right moment, here we cannot continue making progress because it could be a stalemate. But this is the right moment, we can play c6 here, and now we are creating a passed pawn, and we are actually winning the endgame. So like c6, we are promoting, so black needs to capture. We can play king c7, for example. And then we are promoting and mating very soon, like in three moves, I think. So one more time, the right move in a normal endgame position was taking opposition. This time we did not have regular, but we could take the diagonal opposition and it was good enough. Finally, I want to show you this endgame. This time we have a pawn down. So this is king and pawn versus king and two pawns. Also black king is really active. 
However, we can save this endgame keeping this rule in mind. Actually, this one is a little tricky because we can play uh, King F1 taking a position, but this is not going to work very well because we won't be able to maintain opposition for the next two moves. So after King F1, Black can play King D2, we take a position again, and then Black can play King D3. Now we cannot play King F3. That's the main problem we have in this position. Maybe we can go back, but then they take a position and then we are lost. They will make progress from now on. After king g2, king e2, king g3, king f1, and after king, uh, let's say king g4, or maybe let's say king h3, this is probably more interesting. Black can play king f2, and then king g2. And the idea is that at some point we need to capture, they capture, we attack, they defend, and they promote. So what I'm saying is that regular opposition is not going to work this time, because we cannot maintain the opposition for the next two moves. However, the right move is still taking opposition, but taking distant opposition. So this time we don't play king f2, we don't play king e3, we don't play king h3 or king h2. For example, the problem with king e3 is that black is playing here king e1, taking diagonal opposition. So the right move is going to be king h1. Here there are three squares between both kings, is a not number that means that we are taking distant opposition. That's the only way to defend this endgame. The idea here, the method we are going to use to defend this position is that we are going to use these three squares as long as black king goes to one of these three squares and we are always going to be taking distant opposition. Of course, black king can also get a little closer and come over one of these squares, but this is going to be okay because we can also use these squares. And then we'll be taking regular lateral opposition and we're going to be good and we can maintain this opposition as long as we need. Also, if black king at some point comes over here, it's going to be fine because then we can be attacking. Our king is going to be either on g3 or a3. So we could be attacking the pawn on g4. This is going to create a problem for black the only way to defend that pawn will be by counter-attacking our pawn on f3. So they might need to, you know, come back to uh, e3. And then again, we come back, we do the same thing. We come back to e3. And then, you know, as long as black king is on e, we stay on g. And when black king is on d, we stay on h. With either regular or distant opposition. That's the way to defend this endgame. So let me show you this on the board. If they go here, we go here. If they get closer, we get closer, always with opposition. If at some point, opposition again, if at some point the king goes to d4, uh, we cannot go to h4, but it's all good. We can play king g4, attacking the pawn on g5. The king needs to come back to counterattack, and then we just come back again and we keep regular opposition. That's the way to get a draw here. That's the way to defend this endgame. One more time, the right move, when we had many options, the right move was taking opposition. This time, regular opposition was not working, but distant opposition was working very well. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you want to learn the 20 most important endgame principles, there are many examples and stuff there to analyze and learn. Check out this interesting video over here. I'm sure you will enjoy it and it will help you a lot. Thank you so much, guys. Like, subscribe. See you on the next.